they have their list of what they call contraband. And they say, you can't have this up there. So right or wrong, that's their list. I don't like the Nazi stuff. But they're telling Krilipsky and Ray John, these are the things. They're emailing him. They're phoning him. They're following up with him. Look at that effort they're going to to save this guy. So this is a, a court case. And it was issued on February 26th. It was heard on February 24th. So very, very recent, right? March, April, like two and a half months ago. And look at it. It's called Rage On, Inc. And Shopify. So Rage On was suing Shopify in the uh, Superior Court of Justice. Ray John had a lawyer named Delagran, and Shopify had uh, two lawyers, three lawyers. They were really going heavy duty. Three lawyers. That's the thing. You take on a tech company, they got more lawyers than anybody. I'm going to read a little bit of this. Ray John, Inc. conducts an online business which allows third-party users to upload and offer for sale products such as clothing items bearing user-generated prints and designs. That's pretty clear, right? Do you want to go ra rage on just to show people what, what that, that looks like? So that's sort of cool. It's, um, it's not like they, they even come up with their own designs, which, but they might. They allow anyone to, to make a shirt, sounds like. Um, prints and designs. So, yeah, look at that. Uh, pretty, pretty lively. Oh, it says down for maintenance. Yeah, so nifties and stuff. They're into really, like, like, that's pretty funny, that cat with the laser eyes. So these folks are really up to the minute in terms of, like, I think they, they like cats, obviously. There's another cat with lightning eyes. I see some, uh, you know, is that a Buddha, Buddhist statue? Like, there's, um, there's a cat sitting on pizza. There's, there's like, uh, doves. I think, I think you might need to embrace the uh, drug culture to get the full benefit of Rage On. Anyhow, so now we know who Rage On is. Go back to the court case. So I'm going to read. Shopify has a policy, I'm reading, uh, regarding acceptable use of its platform, which prohibits, it prohibits certain activities in connection with the use of its services, including prohibitions on using the services to promote or condone hate or violence or allowing content which is associated with terrorist organizations. Okay, so you can see the tension already. This is very dramatic, isn't it? Paragraph one, who is Rage On? Paragraph two, who is Shopify? We have a protagonist and an antagonist, don't we? Rage on just wants to rage on. I want to have lots of kitty cats with lightning and lasers in their eyes. And Shopify says, whoa, slow down there, Nelly. You know, you have to be acceptable. Okay, I, I feel the tension in the air. Beginning in October 2020, Shopify notified Rage on on several occasions that it found and removed content on Rage on's online store that promoted or condoned hatred or violence and that is associated with terrorist organizations. Shopify advised Rage On that such content violates Shopify's policy and that Rage On was required to remove such content from its site. So that was October. And you can see they notified them on several occasions. So they called them or emailed them once. They did it like several means more than one. So let's say that means twice, maybe even more. In January 2020, so now we're talking November, December, three months later. So you've had three months of banter between the Shopify folks and the Rage On folks. Three months. In Jan 2020, Shopify gave Rage On a final warning. The content which violated its policy would not be tolerated on its platform and that any further violation would result in the immediate termination of Rage On's account. Rage On responded that it was committed to complying with Shopify's policy and it asked Shopify to assist it to do so. Okay, are you ready for this next paragraph, which I think is very interesting. 
after giving this final warning, Shopify again identified content which had not been removed from Age on site and which violated Shopify's policy against hateful content and content associated with terrorist organizations. On February 17th, so we're into February now, this has been going on October, November, December, January, we're four months in now. On February 17, 2021, Shopify gave written notice to Rage On that it was terminating its agreement with Rage On. So that's a lot of warnings, a lot of banter, a, and four months, right? Several, so that, that's a lot of, uh, we know from the judge's language that it was at least three, three communications. And then paragraph six, Ray John brings this motion for an interim injunction directing Shopify to restore all rights and blah, 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 blah. And then paragraph seven, Ray John's motion is dismissed. So just to catch up here, and I am going to read a little bit more. So what is the salient part of this story so far? The judge told you Ray John is losing. That's paragraph, for the following legion reasons, Ray John's motion is dismissed. So Shopify won this battle, but I'm going to get into this. What is the salient thing to take away from this? What's the, what's the saltiness? What's the character of it? That Shopify used its words. Hey, guys, that, that T-shirt there, that's crazy. That's too much. Hey, guys, can you deal with that one? Hey, guys, several times, one, two, three. Back and forth. Hey, can you do this? And Ray John says that. And Shopify said, there is three, four months of, I don't know if it was constructive. It sounds like Shopify wanted to fix it. Four months they tried. May I contrast that with the case of Rebel News, where PayPal on a Friday night at 6.02 p.m. without giving me a contact information, any specificity, says, oh, you guys are done. Six-year contract, eight and a half million, eight whatever dollars, 150 plus thousand dollars in, in fees, 152,000 transactions. Ha <laughs> ha, suckers, hate, sucks to be you. You see you later. Oh, and also Ezra, your personal account, and for Canada, your nonprofit account, and all your accounts associated with you. We don't like the looks of you. Really? Is that how it works in the law-talking places? Let's read a little more. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm going to skip down. I'm not going to read. So the judge does a really good... This judge is a clear writer. What's this judge's name? Justice Kavanaugh. You know, I just absolutely can't say enough good things about judges who speak clearly in plain English that no lawyers can misunderstand and that makes the law accessible to lay people. Would you agree with me that on that, Justin? What is the point? You know what? Show how smart you are, not by using... $100 words that no one can understand. If you're so smart, express your complicated ideas in plain language so everyone can understand. Don't throw jargon around. I should take my own lesson. I like to th drop the old piece of Latin just to show off. But, but I just told you the game there. I'm showing off. Judges' jobs aren't to show. We know you're smart. We know you know a little Latin. We know you're fancy pants. You're a judge. We, we got that part. Now can you explain clearly what the law is? And I think Justice Kavanaugh doing a good job. Let's keep going. So I'm scrolling down. Um, here we go. Let's look at paragraph 12. The terms of service require that Ray John agree with and accept all the terms. Okay. Section 3.2 of the agreement provides that Rajon shall be responsible for the content. All right. Section 7 of the agreement addresses its term and termination. So he's just going through the contract. Look at Section 15. Shopify's terms of service, uh, blah, 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 described as hateful content and terrorist organization. Now, I don't know what they were doing. Maybe we'll find out here. Like, is that ISIS or I don't know. What are you doing with terrorist stuff? Stay away from that, guys. And Shopify was saying that. Let me read the, what the, their terms of service. This is Shopify. This is not PayPal. Hateful content. You may not use the services to promote or condone hate or violence against people based on race, ethnicity, color, national origin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Terrorist organization. You may not offer goods or services or post or upload materials that imply or promote support or funding of or membership in a terrorist organization. Okay, obviously. Um, 
I'm going to skip ahead. To, I don't, there's a lot of detail here. So point 18. Before the middle of 2020, Ray John had not received notification of noncompliance with the AUP. Shopify's evidence is that historically it focused principally on responding to reports of violations over the course of 2020 in response to a variety of highly publicized world events. Shopify adjusted its approach to the enforcement of several categories. Okay, I wonder what that's all about. Oh, here we go. In particular, Shopify noted that any content associated with QAnon, the Proud Boys, and the Boogaloo movement as well as content depicting the Confederate battle flag violating their terms. Now, I think that that's over the top. I mean, QAnon is a quirky worldview, but that is not terrorism. I think that Shopify is wrong here. The Confederate battle flag, the not a terrorist group. That was an army of the South, an army that was defeated in the Civil War, but that is not terrorist. That's my own opinion. But my point through this whole thing, and I say again, Shopify won this argument, is that Shopify engaged with Ray John back and forth for months to to say, hey, we don't like this, and we don't like that, and we don't like this, and we don't like that. Those are the things we won't do. These other things you're doing are fine. If you want to stay with us, that's our rules. And they could have haggled, and they could have gone back and forth. But you see the dialogue. The fair dealing, the good faith, that's what I'm talking about. I think that Shopify's wrong. QAnon, how's that any kookier than the cult of David Suzuki or or Greta Thunberg? How's that any kookier than the absurd, you know, Russia collusion theory? Or as Jake Tapper of CNN (laughs) calls Justin Trudeau, TrueAnon, I love that. But listen, that's Shopify's view. I disagree with it, but that's their view. But do you see my point? Look at section 20. Look at section 20. Here we go. In the October 6th notice, Shopify provided a list of 21 links to products that it had removed from Ray John Shop and specifically advised Ray John, please note that the reposting of the roof content or any other violation of Shopify's acceptable use principles may result in the suspension. So they, they, do you see the very, they provided a list of 21 links. In response to this notice, Ray John CEO Mike Krilivsky advised that Ray John is a user-generated content marketplace which does not upload designs its users do. He suggested working together with Shopify to prevent products that respond to keyword searches for offending conduct from appearing. Mr. Krilivsky asked Shopify to provide ideas on how Ray John and Shopify can mitigate this type of product uploads from random users. All right, well, that's an interesting response, but that showed he was happy to work with them too. I thought that was an interesting. He just really didn't want to hire someone to vet everything because you can imagine Ray John. I don't know how big they are. Actually, I'd never heard of them before. Have you heard of them before this? No, but they could be huge. What do I know? So maybe they have a thousand things a day. Is Mr. Krilivsky going to hire one or two staff just to, and they're, they're going to now, okay, well, is this Confederate? What's QAnon? Like, so I like the thinking here. Let's, let's find some keywords that's automate this. So, okay, I respect the answer from Mike Krilipsky. 22. Over the following months, Shopify continued to identify material on Ray John's website, including content associated with QAnon, the Proud Boys, Nazism. Well, I don't like that. The Boogaloo Movement. I've heard of that. I don't know what that is. It makes me laugh when I hear that word, but I presume it's something very bad. I thought that was a kind of dance, Uh, as well as content depicting the Confederate battle flag. Well, listen, I'm not an American. I don't understand enough. uh, 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 What's the difference between the Confederate flag and a Confederate battle flag? I don't know. That's none of my business. But my point here is to show, do you see the back and forth? Do you see the good faith dialogue, both from Shopify and so far from Mike Krilipsky? On October 8th, Shopify noted Ray John of additional content, Nazi stuff, final notice. On October 21st, representatives from Shopify spoke with Mr. Krilipsky by telephone. During this call, Mr. Krilipsky was reminded that Ray John is responsible for all content, regardless of it was posted by third parties. On October 23rd, Shopify sent Mr. Krilipsky a follow-up email reiterating this. 
Do you see how hard they're trying? Now, I'm not saying I agree with their terms of censorship. I don't, I don't know what the Boogaloo Boys are. I, wa- I don't know there's a Confederate flag, Confederate battle flag. But that's not the point. The point is they have their list of what they call contraband. And they say, you can't have this up there. So right or wrong, that's their list. I don't like the Nazi stuff. But they're telling Krilipsky and Ray John, these are the things. They're emailing him. They're phoning him. They're following up with him. Look at that effort they're going to to save this guy. And I contrast that to PayPal after six years, more than eight million bucks just sending me a goodbye John. What's that? A, a, a Dear John letter on Friday at 6.02 p.m. Is that what's called, Dear John? Oh, hi, friends. What you just saw there is a clip from our Rebel News daily live stream show. It's fun, it's fast, and it's completely unscripted, so you never really know what you're going to get. Just go to rebelnews.com slash live